I feel as if you have all been done terrible injustice. Up until recently, you <laughs> thought that Santa, Santa is real. Santa is not real. So I've prepared this article that I titled Santa Physics. First off, I'd like to address the issue of flying reindeer. Considering the fact that there are no known species of reindeer that can fly, the odds of a flying caribou is real slim. But that does not mean that they don't exist. There are 300,000 species of organisms yet to be classified. And while most of these are insects and germs, yet this does not completely rule out the flying reindeer, which only apparently Santa has ever seen. Second off, there are two billion children, persons under 18, in the world, but since Santa doesn't appear to handle the Muslim, Hindu, and Jewish, Buddhist, religions, children, that reduces the workload to 15% of the total 378 million, according to the Population Reference Bureau. At an average census rate of 3.5 children per household, that is 91.8 million homes. And for argumental purposes, let's say one good child is at each home. Santa, Santa has 31 hours of Christmas to work. With thanks to different time zones and the rotation of the Earth, consuming, assuming that he travels east to west, which seems logical, <laughs> this works out to 822.6 visits per second. This is to say that each Christian household with good children, Santa has one one thousandth of a second to park, hop out of the sleigh, jump down the chimney, fill the stockings, distribute the remaining presents under the tree, eat whatever snacks he has been left, get back up the chimney, get back into the sleigh, and move to the next house. Pretty ridiculous, I know. Assuming that each one of these 91.8 million stops were evenly distributed around the earth, calculations will accept that we are now talking about a .78 miles per household trip. The total round trip, 75 and a half million miles, not counting stops. <clears throat> what most of us do not at least understand is that 31 hours plus feeding the reindeer, this is absolutely impossible. This means Santa sleigh is moving at 650 miles per second, 3,000 times the speed of sound. For purposes of comparison, the fastest man-made vehicle on Earth, the Ulysses Space Probe, moves at a pokey 27.4 miles per second. A conventional reindeer can run tops 15 miles per hour. The payload on the sleigh adds another increasing element. Assuming that each child gets nothing more than a medium-sized Lego set, two pounds roughly, the sleigh is carrying 321,300 tons. Not counting Santa, who is invariably described as overweight. On land, conventional reindeer can pull no more than 300 pounds. Even granting that flying reindeer, C.1, could pull 10 times the normal anoint, we cannot do the job with eight or nine reindeer. <laughs> we need 214,200 reindeer. This, is incre this also increases the payload, not even the weight of the sleigh, the 353,430 pounds that the sleigh already weighs. So children, again for comparison, this is four times the weight of Queen Elizabeth I. 355,000 tons traveling at 650 miles per second creates such enormous air resistance that the heat... <laughs> <laughs> that this will heat up the reindeer in the same fashion as spacecrafts are re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. The lead pair of reindeer will absorb 14.3 quintillion joules of energy per second. Each, in short, will burn almost instantaneously, exposing the reindeer behind them and creating a deafening supersonic boom in their wake. The entire reindeer team will be vaporized within 4.2 thousandths of a second. Santa, meanwhile, will be subjected to confusional conf forces. <coughs> 17,500 times greater than gravity. That being said, a 250 pound Santa, which seems ludicrously slim compared to stories, would be pinned to the back of the sleigh at 4,315,000 
and 15 pounds of force. In conclusion, if St. Nicholas ever did deliver presents on Christmas Eve, he is now dead. 